China, a great country with over 5,000 years of uninterrupted civilization, has counted its achievements in its history and endured many hardships. To this day, modern China radiates a new and impressive energy. Let us decipher through culture the answers to the magical codes that lie behind this powerful vitality. Welcome to this episode of Chinese Practice with Chinese Wisdom. Today we are going to decipher the cultural code of discarding the outdated in favor of the new. What kind of spiritual trait is that in Chinese culture? We have invited Jonathan Shoes, British expert in Chinese culture, and Australian TV host Cameron Anderson to join us in our discussion. Welcome you two to our studio. Jonathan, and nice to meet you. you Take a seat. Cameron, nice to meet you. <laughs> Take a seat. In another studio, we have also invited other three guests. They are Professor Wang Xiaoming, Professor Tian Chenshan, and Dr. Kanayev from Russia. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Over 100 young people from home and abroad are also present as our audience. Before we start today's discussion, let's watch a short video. That was very, very innovative, and it has the ancient root. Up until probably three, four hundred years ago, Chinese science was the most advanced in the world. China has impressed me with recent innovations like the 5G and also the clean energy. Innovate new things without um, forgetting who they are and where they all come from. With all like the various like festivals and occasions that we have in China, like which represent like the Chinese culture. In the short video just aired, many people mentioned the spirit of reform and innovation among the Chinese. This spirit embodies the wisdom of discarding the outdated in favor of the new from traditional Chinese culture. Next, let's see how we write the Asian saying of discarding the outdated in favor of the new. In order to help everyone to understand the Asian phrase, let's invite our old friend Uncle Hanzi to analyze the Chinese character. Hello, my name is Richard Sears. Today, let's talk about Ge. This is the oracle character Ge. It looks like a skinned animal hide, which includes the head, body, and tail. That is the original meaning of Ge. At first, it referred to the skin that has been pulled off of the animal. That is what we call leather today. It came to mean the action of skinning the animal. In other words, it means taking off or removing. The meaning of ge gu ding xi means removing the old in favor of the new. Thank you. So when is the earliest appearance of this Asian Chinese phrase, Jonathan, do you have any idea? Yeah, I believe it's first found in the I Ching, or Book of Changes. I'm not an expert on the I Ching, but I did buy a, a copy when I was young. It showed me a different way of looking at the universe. The one thing that doesn't change in the universe is change itself. It's inevitable we discard the outdated in favor of the new. In England, we caught up with the, this idea that's behind it, the changes about two and a half thousand years of later in the Elizabethan era. Wow. It, it's interesting, isn't it? Like it, a 3,000 year old document can have such a profound change on modern society to this day, especially in yeah. China as well. Like uh, that's, that's a testament to the person that wrote it. His foresight must have been amazing. Thank you. 
In order to have a better understanding of discarding the old data in favor of the new, let's listen to the interpretation from experts. Ge and Ding are two hexagrams in the I Ching, or the Book of Changes. The Book of Changes explains them. Ge signifies casting off the old, and Ding signifies taking on the new. The phrase conveys the idea of eliminating the old and establishing the new. Later, the phrase discarding the outdated in favor of the new took on broader meaning to signify the process of breaking away from the old, to make way for the new, promoting the healthy growth of things and society. The wisdom within discarding the outdated in favor of the new reflects the essence of Chinese philosophy and culture throughout history. It involved the relationship between inheritance and development. In today's era, we should inherit and carry forward the traditional Chinese culture, and this is discarding the outdated in favor of the new, a unique spiritual temperament of the Chinese culture. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's an interesting example, like, because uh, with my kids, we uh, w watch a lot of animations, and um, we all know about Kung Fu Panda, right? Po. Well, he was surrounded in tradition, especially Kung Fu and the techniques. He respected that to a T, but without changing tradition, he was able to implement some of his own features, his gut, his big belly, into the martial art moves and became a respectable Kung Fu master. He was discarding the outdated um, in favor of the new. The example from Kung Fu Panda vividly illustrates the innovative spirit of the Chinese people. Now let's go to see a performance and listen to a dialogue from over 2,000 years ago. This poem, called Questions to Heaven, was written over 2,300 years ago over 1,500 characters long. It densely poses more than 170 questions in various aspects, including astronomy, geography, and history. It is a work of remarkable imagination and grandeur. On May 24, 2021, Six months after the landing on the moon of China's Chang'e 5 probe, the five small circular lunar craters near the landing site were named after scientists and pioneers Pei Xiu, Shen Kuo, Liu Hui, Song Yingxing, and Xu Guangqi. They are pioneers in Chinese ancient history who dared to explore. Since the time of questions to heaven, the Chinese nation has never stopped exploring the mysteries of the universe over the past thousands of years. Today, Chinese astronauts have the capability to aim for the moon. Just like traditional Chinese cosmology did, they have engaged in a dialogue with ancient scientists across the time and space. Generations of scientists, driven by an unwavering pursuit of innovation, have responded to the contemplations perplexities and conjectures of their predecessors. They have also illuminated the path for future generations with a spirit of innovation. The author of Questions to Heaven is Chuan, a poet who lived 2,300 years ago. He persistently inquired into the laws of nature, daringly questioned commonly held traditional beliefs, reflecting the exploratory spirit of Chinese people in the pursuit of science and truth. 
Yeah, it's fascinating. And that actually, uh, now I understand why many of the uh, Chinese the missions to space are called Tianwen, you know, questions to heaven. And uh, for such a traditional culture, I don't think uh, they've ever stopped questioning the unknown. Uh, and I don't think it will ever, ever cease to, to, to keep going forward, right? So, and it's great to see that we in the West are just catching up with the fact that the Chinese have been making these contributions for such a long time and that they're in an important, integral part of humankind's quest for knowledge. And the Chinese have always been ready to explore and discover new things. Wow, Jonathan, you put it perfectly. And the spirit of innovation has been passed on from generation to generation. Bruce Colony, a British photographer, has spent over 30 years documenting the great achievements of China's reform and opening up and taken over 250,000 photos. Mr. Connolly has agreed to be interviewed by us. I'm Bruce Connolly. I actually came to China in 1987. It was love at first sight. Life in China, my photography, and also the great changes I've seen with reform and opening up. And it's been amazing to have been able to capture through the lens, take photographs that allow me to show people what the Chinese people are actually like, how they go out and how life has changed for the people. These photos bring back many memories because I live in this time of change. What's even more important is that I had the chance to study in the UK at the turn of the millennium. Traveling around the world also gives me a unique lens through which I can view the rapid growth and advancement of China. Yeah, actually it's interesting. Um, over the time I've observed that in Australia there's more and more uh, Chinese visitors and tourists. So much so to the extent that uh, previously the, the go-to phrase if you saw an, um, an Asian tour group was konnichiwa. And now any Australian that they see a, uh, um, an Asian group will, will automatically assume it's ni hao. And yeah. uh, also the, uh, the signage in, uh, in airports, um, Chinese characters are becoming more and more prominent. Yeah, I have been lucky enough to travel a lot, particularly in Asia. When China was opening up for the first time, that was uh, actually a, a big deal uh, at the time. Uh, it, it had been uh, this mysterious place that we didn't know much about, and suddenly we were given this mass of information. We knew a lot about Hong Kong, but suddenly, as if out of nowhere, there's this huge city just sprung up overnight next door, Shenzhen. And that's now become the archetype of a Chinese boom town and it's internationally recognized as this huge success. This was only possible because of the reforms China was undergoing at the time. New ideas and new systems were coming in. What kind of reforms and innovation are Chinese people undertaking today? Our camera will take us to Shanghai to take a look. The place we are heading to right now is the China Shanghai Pida Free Trade Zone. In 2022, the world's first innovative new drug for treating diabetes was born here. Today, let's go find out the story behind the birth of this new drug. For research and development companies, is the process of developing innovative drugs a very lengthy one? Innovative drugs are characterized by high investment, high risk, and long cycles. In this process, we have specially benefited from the drug market authorization holder system that started piloting in Shanghai in 2016. The system allows R&D companies like us to not build factories early on and instead focus on R&D and finally outsource manufacturing. For R&D companies, 
This actually saves costs in the early stages and also speeds up the launch of innovative drugs in the market. From a string of cold registration codes a decade ago to the world's first innovative new drug today, behind this single pill is the tremendous vitality brought by institutional innovation. As China's first pilot free trade zone, the seeds of comprehensively deepening reform continue to grow in this national experimental field. China Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone has given birth to over 300 institutional innovations from the earliest exploration of business licenses before government permits and the separation of permits and the business licenses to pioneering market access reforms through the One Industry, One License Pilot Program. This has provided numerous replicable experiences for the whole China. Like an overnight spring breeze, reform brings forth blossoming flowers. Well, actually, before I was um, working as a TV host, I was a lawyer in Shanghai. Wow. So uh, we'd actually recommend uh, our clients, especially the ones that wanted to uh, push the boundaries, to actually register in the Shanghai Free Trade Zone. Because when you think about it, it's kind of like a laboratory for entrepreneurs push new policies, regulations that could potentially make Shanghai a pioneer in the industry. So, uh, so this not only was a benefit for the, 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 the client, but also for Shanghai and China as a whole. I've had the advantage of living here for the last 20 years, and of course I've seen many of these changes that have taken place here. What's interesting in the video we've just seen is the way that those zones, I believe, are actually called, in translation, national experimental fields. Yeah. Experimental. Yes. That, that's, that's the key word, isn't it? It's literally innovation, trying something new. Yeah. And that's what these places seem to be focused on. So, as I understand it, it's not just biomedicine, like we saw in the video, but AI, data-driven industries, big data, all that kind of thing. Yes, Cameron just used the word laboratory. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. testing the waters, yeah. you know? In November 2013, China adopted a decision proposing to comprehensively deepen reform. This round of reform covered 15 areas, including the economy, politics, culture, ecology, and judiciary, and specified 336 major initiatives. Yeah, when you're dealing with a country that's as big and complex as China, you realize that reform isn't something that just happens once and then you move on. It's actually a continuous process. There are plenty of new plans which I've seen uh, that involve renewing the country and looking at exactly. innovative, different ways of doing things. Thank you, Jonathan. It is true that a series of institutional innovations have injected strong vitality into the comprehensively deepening of reform. In the field of technology, a range of new inventions, innovations, significantly enhancing people's quality of life. Next, we will experience the innovative charm of China's high-speed railway. I am currently in the northeast region where the temperature is below zero degrees Celsius. The Fuxing bullet train I'm taking, also known as the most cold resistant high speed rail, can still operate as usual at minus 40 degrees Celsius. This Fuxing model, developed independently by China, uses automated anti freezing functions for the first time on a large scale, ensuring the braking system safety and reliability even under extreme cold. China's vast territory and complex terrain have destined the innovative development path of Chinese high speed rail to overcome more challenges. Hello everyone, I'm quite excited now because I've arrived in Nanchi Shizang, which is said to be very close to the sky because of its high altitude. This China-made train has the globally first dual-power traction mode, allowing very smooth traction throughout. 
to prevent passengers from altitude sickness, the train also uses integrated, uninterrupted, automated oxygen supply technology. With these technologies, we can finally travel more freely and comfortably across the snowy plateau. Now, among the over 4,000 high-speed bullet trains crisscrossing China's vast lands, the Fuxing trains alone have safely traveled a total of 836 million kilometers, equivalent going around the Earth 20,000 times. Independent innovation has achieved China's high-speed rail miracle and a vibrant moving China. So Jonathan, I know this time you must have experienced the high-speed rail system. So what impressed you most? The first time I came to make a film in China, which was about 20 years ago, I had to fly everywhere that I needed to go. But more recently, I've been able to take the high-speed trains. And OK, I'm a, generally, from a user's point of view, it just makes so much more sense. It's comfortable, it's fast, and it's easy to use. So what's not to like? Yeah, right. This video just made me realize it's not just the speed that's been improving, but, but the innovation, the sheer innovation that, uh, that's gone into it. You know, the different elevations and um, you know, the, the even the oxygen you know, intake is, is already taken into consideration. If you look at this, this is all for China, but this railway system is expanding far beyond the borders. I mean, you've got the, the Jakarta Bandung, the high-speed railway there, and the China Laos Railway, and China Thailand Railway. Apart from science and technology, China also places strong emphasis on cultural inheritance, innovation and development. Next, let's enjoy a Chinese dance performance and see how amazing it will be when we combine the Asian Dunhuang cave art with extended reality technology. Dunhuang dance draws inspiration from the dance images found in the Dunhuang grottoes dating back to the period from the 16 kingdoms to the Yuan dynasty, spanning over 1,500 to 700 years ago. It also innovatively incorporates elements from both Chinese and foreign dance to create this new dance genre. The Dunhuang dance we just watched is both ancient and modern. Jonathan, how do you like it? Oh, I I'm all in favor, but, but there's a distinction to be made. It's actually discarding outdated, not the old. Ah. Yeah. And uh, it's actually, this phrase, it's very important to remember, it's also about keeping what's valuable in the old and making that new and reusing that where we can as well. Chinese culture is famous for adapting things and making them its own, whether that's ideas from the outside world or its own history, as you saw in the dance. Thank you. What Jonathan just described is the relationship between inheriting and innovating. This contains the key to the enduring vitality of Chinese civilization. Let's listen to the experts. Of the world's ancient civilizations, the Chinese civilization is the only one uninterrupted to continue to this day. One important reason is Chinese civilization is exceptionally innovative, which explains why the Chinese nation upholds fine traditions but never blindly sticks to old ways, and respects the fine traditions but never indiscriminately restores old traditions. Just as we are discussing today, our world is constantly changing, and it is alive. Therefore, it is necessary not only to preserve the values and traditions that have withstood the test of time, but also to continuously seek new values, but retain traditions 
that align with the spirit of the times. Among all innovations, the Chinese path to modernization is a major theoretical innovation. Chinese modernization's immutable goal is to deliver a better life to the whole of more than 1.4 billion Chinese people. For the world, this means a broader market and unprecedented cooperation opportunities. It will also instill strong impetus in the global modernization endeavor. Jonathan, could you please share with us your thoughts on Chinese path to modernization? The growth of China has shown us one thing, I think, and that's that modernization isn't the same thing as westernization. There are a lot of good things in right. the Western model, but China's also exploring modernization and finding its own way of doing things. Now, that's quite a lot to take on <laughs> for any one nation. Developing a pattern of modernization that is its own, rather than simply following a pattern that's been established elsewhere. But given China's size and the length of its history, it makes sense that it has to find its own way. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. Chinese civilization possesses remarkable innovativeness, serving as a guarantee for its continuity and development. The history of world civilizations tells us that every civilization needs to advance with the times and taking the best of its age in order to develop itself. I think this quote aptly unlocks the secret of how culture can thrive ceaselessly, the topic we have been exploring today. And next, I would like to invite two of you to affix the engraved seal to end today's program. Let's go. Thank you for watching Chinese Practice with Chinese Wisdom. See you next time. Yang Yang Zhonghua, Wu Qian Nian, Yi Man Shang Cheng, Shi Wu Shuang, Sai Huan, Wu Di, Wen Ming Shi, Shi Shu Li Yue, Yuan Liu Chang, Tian Xia Wei Gong Xing Da Dao, Qiu Suo Qian Zai Mou Da Tong, Ming Wei Bang Ben Shi Ren Zhen, Ben Gu Bang Ming She Ji Wen, Wei Jiang Yi Liu Ru Bei Chen, Zheng Ji Xiu Shen Zhong Xing Gong, Ge Gu Ding Xing Chang Si Bian, Sheng Sheng Bu Xi Yong Wu Qiong, Ren Ren Wei Xian Wu Pian Si, Wu Hu Si Hai Lun Ying Xiong, Tian Ren He Yi Fa Zi Ran, He Xie Gong Sheng Dao Xiang Tong, Zi Xiang Bu Xi Tian Xing Jian, Bai Zhe Bo Nao Qi Ru Hong, Hou De Zai Wu Di Shi Kun, Hai Na Bai Chuan Ren You Rong, Jiang Xing Xiu Mu Cheng Wei Ben, Xie He Wan Bang Di Yun Gong, Qing Ren Shan Ming。何为贵？人间正道。说不完千古。